I worked hard. That's one thing I would say. All right, what's good, y'all? Pass the Rock, episode 12. How y'all doing, man? Uh, appreciate y'all for always supporting. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Another episode. Today, I have a special guest with me, Romani Henson. How's it going, man? I'm good, man. How you doing? I'm doing good, man. How's it going over there in Europe? Uh, it's different, bro, for sure. You know, with the whole time difference and, you know, we still got COVID going on. We had some games get canceled and stuff. But, I mean, can't complain. I still get an opportunity to play. So, it's pretty, it's pretty good right now. Yeah, man, I feel that. Sure. Um, do you miss it? Do you, like, miss home sometimes? Of course. <laughs> Especially with uh, you know, this time difference. Like, it's like 11 a.m. over there by you right now. Yeah, it's like 12 p.m. Just yeah. just now, 12 p.m. Yeah, and it's it's six it's six twenty two right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like an hour. It's like it's just a whole different like it's kind of like a whole different world over here. Yeah, man, you're already almost done with your day. I'm just getting my day started. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, bro. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go straight into this podcast, man. Um, so just talk to me about how you uh, started. Uh, when did you know that you were developing passion for the game of basketball? Um, you know, I always played basketball when I was younger, but I was more like a baseball kid. So, you know, that was like my, my main focus. But, you know, around like my sophomore year in high school, I grew like two inches, three inches in one summer. I went from like 6'2 to like 6'5. So I was like, you know, I, I might be getting too tall for basketball, I mean, for baseball. <laughs> So, you know, I would say like around my sophomore and junior year in high school, because uh, that was when I first made varsity. I was I was varsity on my sophomore year in high school. So that's probably when I was like, you know, I could probably, you know, take this to another level type. So, right about there. All right, man. And, uh, you know, playing, uh, obviously playing basketball and playing baseball. Um, I know you are originally from St. Croix, correct? And you moved from there you know, to the United States and everything. Would you say that there was a difference with the teams that you played in, played with in San Croix and here, or it was there was really not that much difference? Uh, yeah, I'd say there was a difference. But I would say is the difference, you know, I played with some, like, bigger folks in the United States. You know, in the islands, I was, like, always the tallest. So I had to, like, adjust to, like, when I got to the States, I'm going against, like, seven-foot dudes. Another thing would be, like, the fundamentals, you know, like when I was back home, it was you know more like raw talent. That's that's that was like a phrase that was being thrown around a lot. People said I had the same thing. But like when I came to the states, I had to learn like the fundamentals, you know, going over plays, style reports, you know, stuff like that that we didn't do back in the island. So like those those two things were like the main difference right there. Ah uh, man, and just from the, from that transition, what was the toughest thing for you? Like in that transition itself, like what was what was the toughest thing for you to transition from Saint Croix to the United States when it came to basketball, and also just as a like just as a person, like your social life in general? Um, I feel like it was like a culture shock, really. You know, I moved to the first place I moved to in the states was New York. You know, you know how New York gets. So it's uh, it's the jungle. It's called the jungle for a reason. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like you know getting thrown into New York. That made me tougher off rip, you know, because you can't be, you know, soft living in, in New York City at all. Um, and I would just say, like, you know, like I said, like the the, the fundamental stuff, you know, like I, I could I knew I could play basketball. I was athletic, you know what I'm saying? But learning how to, you know, put all of that into, you know, just learning the basics of the game was, was like maybe the hardest part for me. I definitely feel that, man, when you say culture shock. Because um, I'm originally from Nigeria, and I moved here when I was, like, 14 or so. And I'm telling you, man, it hit me. Like, <laughs> like you like you watching TV, watching movies and stuff, you know, you, you're like, okay, this is what it's going to be. Like, no, bro. <laughs> There's nothing on TV that can prepare you for what you're really about to experience. Bro, they don't. They really, they literally do not show you the uh, – the things that, that you actually are about to go through. They they show you the good stuff. So yeah, definitely I definitely feel you on that, man. 
Um, so talk to me about playing basketball now in high school as a sophomore varsity. How was that? Um, that was cool, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it was like, it's funny, actually, because when I was my freshman year, I used to make jokes like, you know, I'm not even going to play basketball. Like, I'm just going to do baseball. So, like, you know, one of the coaches was like, yo, like, I got to get you on the basketball team. He was on me heavy. You know, so, like, my freshman year, I had a good year my, with, with my JV squad. And then, like, you know, the varsity coach approached me. He was like, you know, if you're trying to play varsity. And I was like, you know, why not? Like I said, like, I was a baseball kid at first. So, you know, basketball was really, like, a second – you know, second option for me. But, you know, like when they approached me and I got that opportunity and I did pretty well, like I started my sophomore year. Like I start, I started throughout my whole like high school career. But when I started my second year of high school, that's when I knew, you know, I could probably take this, you know, play college ball, D1 basketball, you know what I'm saying? So that's pretty like pretty much what I could change for me. Oh man, I definitely feel that. Uh, so speaking on college ball, um, what, what, triggered your decision to go to uh, U Albany? Um, I just wanted to play for like a program that I knew I would get playing time in. Um, and, you know, being with a good coach that I know that's had some success, you know, U Albany has been to the tournament a few times. Like I wanted to be a part of like a winning program. So being a part of a winning program and also getting the opportunity to play with like my, my two main focuses, so, and I felt like UAlbany was the, the best fit for me. Because, you know, I, I did have a, like, I had a couple options. You know, I could have went high major and stuff. Um, yeah. Like, Texas A&M hit me up. I had Pittsburgh on my radar. Uh, I had Virginia Tech. Like, you know, I had some big schools. But, you know, I wanted to make sure I get an opportunity to win while also playing. So, that was, like, my main thing right there. Yeah, that makes sense, bro. Because I feel like basketball recruiting, bro, there's so many – like, there's so many big basketball schools. They're not actually really, really big schools. And, like, right. you don't get to notice that. And it's like, I mean, of course, Texas A&M is a very big school, both football and basketball. But at the same time, it's, like, personal decisions. And, like, just like you said, being part, of, being part of a winning program in which you can actually play. And I feel like the balance between that is actually what a lot of people need to understand. Because, you know, some people go to the winning programs, they don't really play. They don't play, facts. facts. And some people go to – programs that are not winning and they play a lot but it's just like I mean exactly. kind of hard to get your name out there so I, exactly. I definitely understand that uh talk to me about your last year at U Albany how was that for you um actually I, I enjoyed it a lot you know like I said when I first moved to the states for high school I moved to New York so you know me being able to come back and play for U Albany was, was good too uh my aunt went there my uncle went there so, you know, like, I had family that went there. You know, it was in New York, like I said, when I, where I lived. So, like, I was kind of, kind of you know, I was getting myself into. And, um, like, I made, like, good connections there with people. You know, I made other lasting friendships. We had a good season. You know what I'm saying? So, I think it was a good experience for me overall. It was also, like, uh, the best year I had with, like, X's and O's and, like, rotations, you know, learning the fundamentals. Because, you know, our, the way our coach coached was if you didn't know the scouting report or if, you know, if you was messing up on the plays and stuff, you wasn't playing. So I had to be, you know, locked in and focused on that. And I think that helped me, you know, transition into being a pro player. All right, man. So what, when did you start thinking about playing overseas? From the minute, <laughs> from the minute I moved to the States, man, like that was my goal. Like, you know what I'm saying? I wanted, obviously, I wanted to play in the NBA. And I still think, you know, I still believe that I will. But, you know, it's a process to everything. You know, I wasn't known as, like, these big-time high school recruits, you know, coming from the Virgin Islands. You know, I had to work for everything, even what I got today. But from the minute I was pursuing this basketball thing, moving to the States and stuff, I knew I was going to play professionally. Like, there was no doubt in my mind. Yeah, man, that's what's up. I mean, you got to – honestly, you got to better yourself. And you better yourself big time because you, you didn't just go to, like, you know, another state. Like, you went to a whole different country. And it's, sure, like, sure. anything, like, a lot of people – like, people do that and anything could come out of that. But, like, like I said, man, you were able to better yourself. And as we can see, you're still there prospering. So, it's not, it's not like you went there and it's, like, a failed trip. Um, so, just backtracking on the culture shock then, how was – would you say the culture shock from St. Croix 
to here was bigger than the uh, the culture shock from here to there right now? Um, yeah, I think so. I think the one from St. Croix to the States is bigger. Um, just because, like, where I grew up, you know, everybody's, like, you know, super friendly. We walk by, yeah. like, a random stranger. You say good afternoon. You know what I'm saying? You're just, like, super polite, respectful. But, like, you know, in New York, it's uh, – it's a diff- it's a whole different world out there, you know what I'm saying? Like, to me, like New York people are, like aggressive, you know. So it's like yeah. people, you know, quick to snap on you and stuff. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, New York is a is a great place. Like, I love New York, but like, you just you just gotta be aware for what you're getting yourself into when you get into New York. You can't just be nice and just like you know. So you gotta you gotta you gotta be on your p's and q's. You know what I'm saying? So I think that was like the main thing for me right there. Yeah, man. And unfortunately, some people might learn that the hard way when they get charged up or something. So it's yeah. like, culture shock, it really, it really gets you, man. Like, it, it, it takes one to experience it for you to understand, like, what, what you're actually dealing with. And, like, I couldn't imagine, because, I mean, I moved straight to Texas, so I couldn't even imagine going straight to New York. That would probably been a whole different story for me as well. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, I used to visit New York, like, every summer. Not summer, like, every Thanksgiving. Because, you know, my... My aunt, my mother was actually born there. You know, my grandmother lived there. But, you know, visiting and living is, is two totally different, different things. things. <laughs> but, uh, uh, so going from, you know, going from a different environment from college now, you're going overseas, what was a way, how would you say you were able to, able to like, channel yourself and channel your mind to always stay focused on basketball and motivated to what you wanted to do? I mean, keeping in mind that you just move into a whole different environment. How was, like, how did you keep yourself focused all the time? Well, I always, you know, thought about the bigger picture. You know what I'm saying? I thought about, like, how I wanted to see myself, like, two, three, four years into, like, my, my pro career and stuff. So, you know, I always thought about, like, okay, this is just a, a step in. This is just a part of the process right here. So, you know, this is to help me get better. And, you know, every year... I try to, you know, keep my mind like, yo, everything is a part of the process right now. So once I finally get to like where I want to be, it'll make everything that I've done before that just worth it, you know? So that's what I, I kept my mind focused on, you know, where do I want to be when I see myself in the next like eight, nine years. Man, and even just, you know, being out there having teammates, who, who would you say like, even from your current team to all the teams you've played for, who would you say are like, maybe teammates, coaches, maybe even teachers or professors that you'd say that you looked up to or you look up to and, you know, helped you get to where you are right now? Well, um, for one, uh, a coach, you know, two coaches that I looked up to uh, was uh, Coach Rayford and uh, Coach Rob. So those were like my two prep school coaches. And, you know, I always, like I said, I always believed that one day I would be able to play professionally, but it helps to have people around you believe that too. And I feel like they were the first ones to like really believe in me and actually help me take the necessary steps to get to like where I'm at right now. So definitely I would say like Coach Rob and Coach Ray, for like I keep in contact with them, you know, all the time too. Um, I, I go meet up with Coach Rob, I have workouts with him in Atlanta. You know, I, I stay in contact with Coach Rayford. So those two coaches right there, I feel like they really influenced me to, you know, keep going on this yeah. journey and keep pursuing what I was doing. And that definitely makes sense. Uh, I mean, I just, I just feel like in every every person's life, not just, you know, athletes, anybody in general, there's always those people, you know, the hidden people who you, you never really get to see or know that are yeah. behind this people, like a lot of people's mindset because, I mean, even the things you do, you know, the things I do, the things many people do to make themselves successful, like there's always someone that, you know, that you've looked up to to help you in one way or another. And I feel like that's very important because like those people, like, they deserve their credit for sure. And, like those people, right. like you're definitely going to remember for a long time. Exactly. My, that's like my mother always says, man, it, it takes a village. You know what I'm saying? Nobody does it by themselves. Like they're all, so everybody is helped at least, you know, one time along in their journey. So, you know, those people that support you and actually believe in you, like, those people are important. And you have to, you know, you have to always thank them for their role in the process. So I feel like, I feel like that's, that's important, you know, to shout them out. Oh, uh, man. So talk to me about, like, 
one of the toughest times you've probably had in your basketball career to this day? Uh, I would definitely say it's been out here um, because, you know, with this COVID thing, like COVID is just, it just makes everything difficult, man. Um, we've been on lockdown. We had games shut off. So imagine being in a foreign country specifically for one thing and COVID just like takes that away from you. So you're just like out here, you know what I'm saying? So like, that was definitely like a, one of the hardest things I've ever had to like undergo in my life. Like we're on lockdown, like on the weekends, we were on lockdown from like 1 p.m. until like the next day at 5 a.m. So like there's no stores open, there's no like gyms, there's, you just in the house on lockdown. So I mean like that right there was, was super hard for me, but you know, like I said, like I'm just adjusting, you know, it's all a part of the process. So I feel like it's, it's, it's gonna help me in the future as well. You know, just to stay focused, not take anything for granted. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for it, but that was definitely one of the hardest things I've had to go through. Yeah, man, that, that definitely makes sense. Man, it, I can't even, it, it, it takes a different mindset to get through that. Cause you know, whole different country, there's no like bunch of friends, a bunch of families, just people you got like with you. So man, that sounds that sounds tough. I never even thought about it like that. Cause yeah. I don't know, I just assume, I just assumed that you probably got back to, uh we're, we're probably able to come back before everything went down. But then I realized that's um, during basketball season too. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, people, a lot of people don't know, man. It's it's tough over here, you know, but I still get to do what I love. You know, the season's still going on. We had a game yesterday. Uh we lost, but you know, we're going we're gonna to take the necessary steps to get back in the winning column. But, you know, I'm just, I'm just grateful to, to be over here playing because, you know, a lot of people are in the States wish they could be in my, in, in my, in my shoes right now. So I'm just, I'm just grateful for it. Yeah, for sure, man. That's, that's, just, that's just definitely a good way to look at it. And um, just, you know, motivation-wise, who are some, I would say, who are some of your role models of all time? Like, you know, famous people people you know, anybody in general, who are some people that you look up to and you've always looked up to? Uh, I got a few people, you know, but I would say I look up to Kobe the most, you know, and that mama mentality. Because like I said, you know, I was always raw with athletic ability, you know, I could play, but that mental side of that the game is super important. I feel like people don't stress that enough. So, and like, you know, I got my mama mentality book over there. Uh, I was watching, you know, Kobe's uh, documentaries, you know, just, just picking the mind of Kobe, all of his interviews and stuff. And, yeah. like, he was so mentally sharp that, you know, people thought he was, like, crazy, you know what I'm saying, or, like, cocky or all of that. But, nah, all he did was work, 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 you know. And when you work that much, you have no choice but to be confident. And I understand that now, you know what I'm saying. So Kobe, for sure, was somebody who was super, like, motivational inspiration of me in my career yeah man that's that's definitely why like you know his him passing away just shocked the world man yeah, just so crazy, unexpected man. and every time i think about like mama mentality and like his motivation i think i remember uh i think it was Aaron iverson who was saying it was like after uh, they had a game against the lakers in town you know he was there you know after everything you know, iverson's like okay you know i'm about to go to the club or whatever and then he asked Kobe, what you're about to do? And Kobe was like, I'm going to the gym. And this is like, this is like on a weekend, like probably like a Friday night where everyone's trying to go out and have fun. Like even, I, I mean, Allen is one of the greatest basketball players too, but I mean, he, he was going to the club. So, you know, like right, right. You, you, you literally understand how that separated Kobe from everyone else. And, I mean, we saw it on the exactly. athletes as well. Exactly. Imagine, you know, you going to the gym, you got Allen Iverson coming in town, he going to the club, like, you know what I'm saying? You you have no choice but to be confident. Like, yo, I'm yeah. getting my extra weekend while he's out here drinking and partying. You know what I'm saying? So, like, that's that's really why I respect Kobe so much. Yeah, definitely big respect for that, man. Um, all right, so there's a series of uh, random questions. Um, so you about to you 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 at a you at a gym? You about to play a pickup game, right? A pickup basketball game. So it's you and you need four more people. You can pick any basketball players, dead or alive. Who are you picking? Just four. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let's see. For point guards, this is everybody in their prime. 
Yeah, it could be in their proms, it could be a, when they're old, it doesn't matter. <laughs> uh, I'll go, my point guard, I'll go with Chris Paul. You know, Chris Paul, okay. he's a facilitator, he could get buckets, and he plays defense, you know what I'm saying, let the league get steals and stuff. So i go Chris Paul. i go, man, this is tough. Um, i go MJ, you know, MJ. It's just it's Michael Jordan, you know what I'm saying? Like, you just can't go wrong with Michael Jordan. Uh, whew. Mm, KD, you know, I like KD, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and you said, I'm playing too, right? So it's just yeah, four yeah. people. Yeah, so it's just four people. So you got, you got one more now. Uh, Shaq. Shaq? He's most dominant big ever, man. So you can't go wrong. So I say Chris Paul, MJ, KD, me, and Shaq. Y'all about to kick everyone out the gym. <laughs> That's a boom squad, boy. Y'all about to kick everyone out the gym. MJ and Shaq on the same team? Oh, my God. Nah, y'all about to kick everyone out the gym. You know, you know, Paul throwing it up, too. Throwing it up to Shaq. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah, I would, I, would, I would pay to see that game. I would pay to watch that. <laughs> yeah, we us, us against anybody. I got our money on us. All right, man. But uh, who who would you say... Uh, you know, the NBA season officially announced for December 22nd. Who would you say is your favorite to win the championship this year? Um, well, you know, I'm a, I'm a big PG fan. So, you know, I like how they got knocked out last year. I feel like they're going to come with a chip on their shoulder for sure. And I feel like Brooklyn going to come out the East with Katie and Kyrie. You know, I'm, I'm a KD fan too. So i like to see those two go at it. But – in a seven game series, I think I think the Clippers. The Clippers? Think, yeah, because they got like multiple bodies to throw at KD and stuff and Kyrie, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I feel like the Clippers are deeper than the Nets. All right, so just with that being said, talk to me about that day that you watched the Clippers kick <laughs> out in the second round by the Denver Nuggets. Well, how, how did that feel? Yeah, I was over here actually. And I stayed up. It was like five in the morning. I told you, like, the time difference is crazy. Yeah, it is crazy. I stayed up. It was like five in the morning. I was like, all right, let's go. Game seven, you know, Kawhi just hit the game winner last year against, you know, Philly. You know, that iconic ash, that I- I- iconic shot? Yeah. So, I'm like, all right, let's go. We got this. Then to see them boys go out like that, I was so sick. Like, and you know Trey. Trey is a big, big, big <laughs> man. So, this man was on me, like he FaceTimed me before the game was even over and he was just on my head, bro. Like I had to deal with so much slander. Cause you know, I'm a, I told you I'm a big PG fan. And you know, I be, I be like back in PG heavy. So like when them boys went out like that, I had to answer to everybody on Twitter, Instagram. FaceTime. Like it was just coming at all angles, bro. You know, so, I mean, that was definitely tough, but that's what I'm saying. They got to they gotta, they gotta get it together this year, man. Sure. Nah, they definitely got to get it together. Unfortunately, you're speaking to another Laker fan. So, oh, me, me, and, me and Troy definitely had a great time in front of you. <laughs> but, hey, man, uh, I, I still respect Paul George, man. He just needs to make – he needs to come back crazy this year. Like, yeah, he – I don't know what he, like – I don't know what he was on, man, but – I don't know. Him and Kawhi <laughs> Game 7, I don't know what they were on, bro. I don't know what both happened. Tweaking. They were both tweaking. But like I said, but the Lakers though, the Lakers been making some good moves this offseason. Like they got Dennis Schroeder, they got Montrez from us. The Marcus, we got we yeah. got some scary people. Yeah, so uh, the Lakers, the Lakers definitely a contender too. I think I think it's gonna be Lakers Clippers Western Conference Finals. But you know, I gotta go with my team. So yeah, I definitely hope to see that, man. I definitely yeah. definitely hope to see that. Sure. But alright, bro. Appreciate you so much for hopping on this call, for hopping on this podcast, man. Really appreciate you. Wish you more luck uh, throughout the season. Hope we're going to see you in the NBA, bro. It's coming. It's coming yes, soon. Sir. Yes, sir. I'm working, bro. I'm working. <laughs> yeah, man. Appreciate you for hopping on this call, bro. Really, really means a lot for sure, for sure. Yep. No problem, buddy. All uh, right, yo. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. Appreciate y'all for watching this episode. Uh, if you haven't yet, like, sub- subscribe, and comment. And just keep being on the lookout for more episodes. Appreciate y'all for watching, guys. Peace out.